to see in the toilets if you've naughty. So, <laughs> now, shall we get to our next act on? Good morning, Bill. How are we all doing? Yes. Chris mentioned it earlier. Give me a cheer to one of the thousands of people who raised money for charity by doing the Ice Bucket Challenge. Yay! Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> now give me a cheer to one of the thousands of people who didn't do the Ice Bucket Challenge. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm with yous. I didn't do it either. I thought instead of tipping a bucket of water over my head, I'm going to make an actual donation myself yes. of money to charity. I made a donation to a charity that provided three African villagers with the equivalent of a bucket of clean drinking water. Then I nominated those three villagers. <laughs> they couldn't really say no, could they? Look up the video on YouTube, it's a fucking bell <laughs> Charity is good, right? I like charity. Every year we've got children in need. Uh, I actually come from Glasgow. Every year there's a sign in Glasgow which I think sums up both sides of my home city. In Glasgow City Central is a guy dressed as Pudsy, collecting money for children in need. And you see thousands of hard pressed Glaswegians giving their spare change to help out unfortunate children. And you think, good for you, Glasgow. We are a generous city. Then you notice that Pudsy is flanked by four burly security guards. Because <laughs> the fact of the matter is, it doesn't matter if you're dressed as a bear collecting money for charity, stand in Glasgow Central long enough with a bucket of cash, <laughs> you are getting fucking jumped. <laughs> I, became a, I became a parent recently and I'm really loving being a dad, but I don't like being a parent. I'll explain what I mean by that. I love spending time with my son, I love teaching him things, watching him grow. But I hate speaking to other parents <laughs> about kids all the time. It's just the same chat you have over and over again. One of the chats that really annoys me is, was the birth of your child not the most amazing experience <laughs> of your life? I think that goes without saying, right? I don't think that's a conversation that has to be had. So now when a fellow parent asks me that, I like to just wind up. And I say, it was probably about the second best experience. <laughs> and they say, what could possibly be better than the birth of your child? And I say, you've clearly never seen the prodigy life. <laughs> Right, I go to um, I go to Pettenzoo's. I go to Pettenzoo's a lot. Anyone ever been to Pettenzoo? Yeah. Did you go with kids? Yeah. You're alright then. You're not a fucking good talk. <laughs> what do you think the people should be at Pettenzoo's? Parents, kids, and fucking pets. Right, that's it. <laughs> now I was at this Pettenzoo and I was showing my son the llamas. Right, we were at the llamas and my son was looking at them. It's quite nice, right? And this other dad and son came along. And this wee guy was about five, right? And he came running over and he pointed at the llamas and went, Look, Dad! Camels! <laughs> and the dad went, There are no camels, son. Camels have got humps. And the wee boy went, Well, Dad, what are they then? And there was a long pause. <laughs> and the dad just went, <laughs> <laughs> Fuck no, son. <laughs> this all happened right next to your sign that said Lamas. I've <laughs> experienced a lot of new things since I became a dad. Uh, just the other day I fished a shit out of the bath for the first time. <laughs> I was uh, 
And Valentine's Day recently, I thought I'm going to get my wife two cards. I'm going to get a card for me and a card for my son. And I just wanted a simple card for my son that said, I love you. And I wanted a different card for me that said, Brace yourself, you're getting pumped. <laughs> so I think Morrison's right, because that's a bit of a romantic bastard that I am. And I found the first card, and I was looking for the second card. And in the corner of my eye, I could see a wee woman about 60 now, and she was staring at me, growling at me, right, throwing me heavy daggers, and I thought, what's her problem? Then I realised, I've got one Valentine's card, I'm now looking but a second Valentine's card. <laughs> this wee woman thinks I've got a card for my wife. Now I'm looking for a card for my bit on the side. So I thought I have to address this. I've got to say something here. So I turned around, slapped her on the arse, <laughs> and said, play your card right doll, you could be number three. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, what I did there was I took something that actually happened and I exaggerated it and I embellished it to make it hopefully a more entertaining story to you, the comedy audience. <laughs> All that actually happened was in Morrison's <laughs> and I slapped over the nose. I tried to move to a two bedroom, a two bedroom flat night when the baby came along and uh, I had to get carpets cleaned and I moved out and, uh, and I was looking to the paper for carpet cleaners right and they were all about 50 quid. There was this one ad there and it just said carpets cleaned, 20 quid, phone rap. And I made the mistake of phone and rap right. <laughs> and this thing Meg turned up with a carpet cleaner in the house. And that plan was let the guy in, clean the carpets, go out, do some stuff, come home, carpets are cleaned, pay the guy. But I didn't wait to leave. I needed my house one day. <laughs> Get done a shit in my bath, didn't want that happen again. <laughs> so I wound up having to hang about and make small talk with this guy Rab all day, right? And we were kind of running out of things to say. And he hit out with a bit of Glaswegian classic Ned small talk. And he went, mate, when is it your fee anyway? And I said, Rab, you're in my house, mate. Then, <laughs> <laughs> gentlemen, keep going to Comden X, right? Laughter really lightens the darkest hour. I have a good example, a good friend of mine, right? He recently found out his dad had been diagnosed with cancer, right? And they were going back and forth to the hospital for his treatment. And the doctors decided they had to come back for this specialist scan. And this scan was a four week waiting list, right? So on the bus, and they were heading home, and the bus was reading the paper, and the paper was a story for this woman, some Z-list celebrity, right? Who had got a book job on the NHS. And my mate was reading this story, and it fucking annoyed me, it enraged my mate, right? My mate went like that. Wait a minute, Dad. We've got to wait four weeks for a cancer scan, and this girl is getting her tits done <coughs> on the NHS. That's a fucking joke, Dad. That money should be getting spent on you. And his dad just turned around and looked at him and said, Son, what the fuck would I want with a boob job? <laughs> <laughs> One last story right then I'm going to go. I was in the train kind of work and I found a phone, an iPhone in the train. One of my iPhone is right on it. Pretty good phone right. Now in this position you get two choices. If you're a good guy, try and get the phone back to its owner, or you can be a dick and get to cash and bills. <laughs> and I believe in karma, so I'm going to try and get this phone back to its owner. Looked in the call register, the last number dialed was a guy called Tam. So I phoned Tam and I said, all right mate, how you doing? I found your mate's phone, meet me at Glasgow Central, I'll give you the phone, you give it back to your mate. He replied, Jerry, what are you talking about mate? <laughs> I said, no, I'm not your mate Jerry. <laughs> My name's Eddie, I found Jerry's phone, I'm calling you from that phone, that's why it says Jerry on your phone. <laughs> <laughs> meet me, I give you the phone, you get it back to your mate Jerry. And he replied, Jerry, what have you been taking, mate? <laughs> <laughs> this was back and forth for five minutes. Before I decided Tam was a fucking moron. <laughs> but I still wanted to do the, do the right thing and get this guy Jerry's phone back, so I hung up the phone and I thought, I'll phone somebody else. 
and almost instantly the phone rang. Can we guess who it was? Jerry. It was Tom. <laughs> and I answered and I said hello and he went, yeah, Jerry. I think some cunt's got your phone by the way. Ladies and gentlemen, you've got Jack McEvigan. I hope you enjoyed that. I'm going to cast it.